Some bottles might even continue to cook or ferment over time. This can raise the alcohol content from a legal 0.5% up to 3%, which is as high as some beers. The next time you head out on the town, remember to bring some extra cash. Austin Cab Companies and the City Transportation Department have agreed to raise cab fares by 13%. This is a 29% increase since 2005. The majority of Texans have not returned their census forms. If participation rates don't go up, Austin could lose millions of dollars in federal funding. Wednesday was the last night for Nebraska to come to Austin and play Texas's conference rivals. It was also Julianne Falsett's last night to play Nebraska in Austin as a Longhorn. If 30 million tanners continue to hit the beds each year, the tan tax is expected to generate nearly $3 billion over the next decade. Welcome back everyone. The population of runners is growing with the help of rock and roll marathons. ABC News on campus reporter Miriam Smith went to the most recent event in San Antonio. Good morning. Thanks Quita. These rock and roll races are different than your average marathon because there are concerts at each mile marker along the way. There's a new kind of marathon that's making the daunting 26.2 mile distance a little less intimidating. This achievement of doing a marathon is, is such a great feat for people, but it's just a small segment of people that are participating in it. Why don't we just set up a concert at every mile? The founders of the Rock and Roll Marathon series thought combining live music with running would get more people interested in marathons. So if you're out there thinking, gosh, I could never run 26.2 miles, but I could run from stage to stage and take a break and dance and sing a little bit and then keep running on. It is good to have the encouragement out there, the extra music to kind of take your mind off your legs. It provides a little bit of a distraction and, you know, a little beat to go on with you. It just is, helps enhance that runner's high that we already have. In 1998, the only rock and roll marathon was in San Diego. Now they're in 14 cities across the country and next year they're adding six more. Live music has made long distance racing more manageable to people who aren't necessarily avid exercisers. 30 to 50 percent of participants in rock and roll events are first time marathoners. It's attainable for many people that otherwise wouldn't have thought that they could have run a marathon. Maybe they are diehard music fans, but they can combine their love for music and this new initiative to get healthy and to get fit and to set goals. But it can be hard to cater to 30,000 runners' musical preferences. Sometimes their song selection isn't the best, but <laughs> it's still nice to have them out there. They had uh, REM losing my religion, and uh, <laughs> I'm thinking, do I run faster or do I blow my brains out? <laughs> It is hard for the race directors to pick bands that can suit every runner, but with 26 choices, you can count on at least a few from each genre. For ABC News on Campus, I'm Miriam Smith. All right, great story, Miriam. Thank you. Jobs are scarce, and studies show that the majority of students participate in internships by the time they graduate. It's good experience because you can only learn so much in class. But some worry that the growing popularity of unpaid internships is a sign that employers use interns for free labor. You can't work slave labor in America anymore. Spivey says a difference does exist between a legitimate learning experience and an illegal internship. Where does the benefit fall when it gets to be all in favor of the employer then the employee should be compensated. Barton sees the benefits of her summer job, but sometimes thinks she deserves to get paid for her work. The off-site wedding where we literally were servers, I felt like at that, at that moment we should have gotten paid. Interns must also take note of the hours they're asked to work every week. Any employer that works an employee over eight hours a day and is not paying that employee is taking a serious risk. One intern was afraid to disclose the details of his actual work schedule. To be honest, I feel a little bit lie. I guess I'm only able to say that I work 40 hours. But off camera, Nagib later admitted that he actually works 70 hours a week. Despite the possibility of getting overworked, most people agree that unpaid internships, including those here at the Four Seasons, can be beneficial as long as you're able to afford working for free. They're walking away with experience as well as a well-read resume and a possible job here. If you think there's a possibility that your internship may be illegal, talk to your local employment attorney as each case is unique. Charlie Miriam Clark, Smith, Clark. Texas News Watch. Austinites are finding a new way to party that's green and burns calories. It's called the Pub Crawler, and they're popping up in cities across the country. ABC News on campus reporter Miriam Smith tried it out herself. Miriam. The newest mobile unit on the food and drink scene in Austin is not a trailer. It's a pedal-powered bar called a pub crawler. <laughs> yeah, we got some real power here. 
pub crawler of Austin is making rounds about the city and giving patrons a unique and charming adventure. It's a party on wheels. A bar on wheels. A uh, pedal powered mobile bar. San Antonio native Jennifer Elliott experienced her first pedal pub on a business trip last year. She brought the idea back to Austin and felt confident that it would be an instant hit. Austin being a group of people that I think they like exercise, but they also like to have a good time. And they're green because you're not polluting the environment. So I think it was many factors that brought us to this. Pedaling can work up a sweat, although there are a few non-pedaling seats available. It's much easier um, sitting on the back row than it is pedaling because that's, uh, that's a little hard work. <laughs> Some of the grades are a little steeper than others, and uh, people have to really work a little bit more arduously than what they normally do. The way it works is you get at least 10 people together to rent the pub crawler and bring your own beer cans, box wine, or keg. It costs $160 an hour to rent the pub crawler during the week and $190 on the weekend. When you divide that by 16 people, it's just a little over $10 an hour um, for great entertainment that you won't find anywhere else. The pub crawl team has to set firm rules to keep their buggy on the road because there's only one known insurance provider in the country that covers their kind of vehicle. Everybody wants to know how it's legal, um, you know, as far as the drinking goes, and we do have restrictions. You need to not drink too much. If you are a nuisance and you do cause problems, then we, we reserve the right to ask you to step off and and find a way home. Starting the pub crawler has truly been a family effort. Lund and her husband manage the company with their neighbor while Lund's dad drives and keeps the group under control. Having him drive was part of the whole process of putting the thought together that we really can do this and we could have somebody that we you know trusted and depended on and knew could have fun with the customers but be very authoritative when he needed to be. I guess it brings us all closer together. Pub Crawler has six different routes available to try. Each has varying levels of difficulty and different numbers of pub stops. Their newest addition is the UT football tailgating route, sure to be a hit for Horns fans. For ABC News on Campus, Miriam Smith, Austin. If you can't round up enough people to rent the pub crawler, they do offer a hump day pub crawl on Wednesdays where you can bring just a few friends and come to make new ones. It's from 7 to 10 and it costs $35 a person. For ABC News on Campus, I'm Miriam Smith. Keep in Austin weird. Thanks, Miriam.